<clears throat> okay, day 11 of uh, my Achilles injury. Things are going okay. Uh, what I want to talk about first is I was talking about returning to running in the last video. When I was talking about the load and decreasing the load, you remember intensity, duration and frequency. Yeah. What I'm not saying is go out and try and get a load of running in because all the time we're thinking don't make the injury worse, don't re-injure or make it worse, yeah. So bringing down those three elements is important. So since I saw you, you on Sunday when I'd done that little little bit, since then I've only been out once. So I went out on Thursday and I literally jogged to my local co-op, which is, I don't know, 0.3 of a mile away. Took a bag, did some shopping so I could walk around the shop keeping it nice and loose and then I jogged to the country park and then it was a jog walk jog walk yeah the minute it started to feel beyond discomfort to some form of pain stopped and walked yeah and I did that for a bit and then I came you know before it turned into anything painful I came home yeah so but I felt good because I'd done something yeah I'd, I'd done a bit of a, a bit of a run tested it a little bit and it's good to test it see how we're getting on so that's, that's what I want to say on that. I, I don't want people thinking, oh, this guy's saying, yeah, just get back up running, you'll be all right. You won't, yeah? Also, though, in the back of my head, I'm training for an event and I'm well behind now. So just doing that little bit mentally is great for me because I think, well, at least I've done a couple of miles. Not great pace, a lot of walking, but at least I've done a couple of miles. I've done something, okay? So enough of that. Uh, Exercise-wise, where are we? So we've done lots of car phrases so far we've done a bit of band work have i been religiously doing my band work no uh again like i say this is very trying to make this very true and real account and life's bloody busy yeah and the last few days have just been mental and i've had very little time to do a lot other than working kids to be fair and that will happen to you and when that happens the worst thing i see is people coming here and beat themselves up about it and going oh i haven't done this or i should have done that it, it didn't do it it doesn't matter We'll get round to it, yeah? Give yourself a break, yeah? Um, I can now do soft tissue work around the tendon, so I can now, you know, I've shown you all the tips right back on day one and two. I can now go onto the tendon, so what's quite nice is if that's the tendon, yeah, do thumbs either side, and then drag it through like that, yeah? So when uh, it gets quite niggly, if you do this for, you know, five, 10 minutes, while you're watching the telly, it really helps, it really eases it off, okay? I'm gonna do a different tape and technique today and some variations on exercise, so I wanna get more dynamic now, okay? So, different exercises. So if you're doing the car phases, they've been going okay, still quite tender, so only working until it becomes uncomfortable and stopping, not getting to pain. What I've noticed is so what I've been, so, so okay, so what I've decided to do from here, so I was doing my good leg, is so we've done lots of this kind of thing. Now what I've been doing is going down into a bit of a single leg squat, coming up and then up into a calf raise at the end. Okay, so down and then up. So I'm adding a squat to the calf raise to incorporate some single legs and glute activity, some single leg stability. So I do eight, like so, and then what I do is I bring my foot out, change the center of gravity, make the hip work harder to hold you. And then I do eight or so with my foot to the front. And then when I've done that, I bring it out to the side and back a bit. And that makes it very unstable. And it's a lot harder for the hip to stabilize and the calf's working hard as well. On my injured side, I don't know if you can see, but the ankle straight away is giving it this, yeah? So I'm going very carefully on this one. And then the minute I'd add something like this, it wobbles quite a lot. So I don't need, to, if I was losing control, I'd stop, reset, and then go again. There's no point exercising if you're doing this, because you're not reinforcing the right muscles. So, but what, what's happening is my foot's collapsing inwards, yeah? Which we don't want. So, 
especially if I go out to the side, yeah, because now I've put my body weight to the side, my foot's trying to pull in, my hip's trying to fight it, but this isn't, it, so I'm not, let me get this out, I'm not doing this on my injured leg yet because my ankle and my hip can't support it, okay? So I'm sticking, stick, sticking to a straight squat and out to the front. And then I can add a car phase at the end of each one, should have said that. So I'm not just doing a single leg squat and then coming up into a car phase at the end. Yeah, so we've added the squat to the car phase with a leg here, a leg to the front and a leg to the side to change the centre of gravity. So that's really working the hip and the calf. But I want to rectify that kind of uh, collapse. So I'm going to try this taping technique. Not really done this before. And if it works, I'll add it to my taping technique videos. But what I've done, I've cut myself two strips ready, going from the base of my heel, and I've come again about a hand's width above the inside ankle bone, cut one strip that length, and then done another one a bit longer at the top. Yeah, rounded the edges off with my first one, take off the first inch of backing, stick it on the base of my heel with no stretch, smooth it down. Now I'm gonna lift my toes towards me, pull on the tape to remove the backing, that's 100%, I'm gonna to go to about 50% stretch, and I'm gonna follow up the line of my Achilles, or calcaneus tendon, whichever you wanna call it, smooth it off with no stretch at the end, and then just smooth it down around the tendon. So they strip on. Before I was putting another one straight across the back to offload the tendon. I'm gonna do that, but try and add something to it. So what I'm going to do, bear with, like I said, I've never tried this before, I just thought of it earlier this morning. Taking off the first inch or so, put it on my inside ankle bone, okay? Then I'm going to give it a tug, take the backing off. Now I'm going to give it 100% stretch over the tendon, like so. You see how easy it is. I'm going to stick that, because it's hard on yourself here, should have my foot bent. I'm going to put that stretch back on and come under my foot, under my foot, and then back, where am I going? Back up, I'm just going to go over my ankle point, I think, and smooth it off there. Okay, so I've done like a loop around the ankle and back up to try and rim. So I've, what's my thought? Offload the tendon like we have been doing, but add a bit of medial support, yeah? Take the finger side, activate the blue. So there we go. So I'm hoping that now will help support my ankle a little bit while it's rehabbing. In between taping, again, two days on, two days off, in between, I'm gonna be wearing compression socks just to see if that helps move it on. So my two days off, I'm just wearing compression socks. All right, every day. Okay. So that's those two bits, the last bit. So I've been doing this a lot in the kitchen. So you don't need a gym, you know, just use your kitchen while you're cooking. And I've been thinking, right, I wanna get some more dynamic, functional movement in it. So I started like this. So injured leg, and I've sort of gone into almost a bit like a bunny stance, yeah? So I've got my right knee, knee up, bending the knee, hand forward, and all I want to do is push off through the left leg and land on the right initially, okay? And when I'm landing on the right, I'm landing on my toe, toe beneath knee, you know, good running technique, toe beneath knee, or foot beneath knee, landing and then coming down. Okay. just to get that concentric contraction, that power through the calf. And the first few, you know, first few times I can feel it, 
and then it started to back off a bit. So I thought, okay, that's good. Concentric. Well, how about eccentric then? So then I went from the right leg, my good leg, landed on the toe of my left and then down. But what I'm trying to do, land on the toe, yeah? I'm trying to talk this through. Land on the toe and slowly lower it down. So it's catching the weight and then offloading the weight, okay? So it looked like, you see I'll wobble, so I start again. The minute you wobble, put your foot down because otherwise you're just reinforcing the wrong thing. So catch and down, good. Yeah, it takes a bit of practice. Catch and down. To begin with, you may find that a little bit tender, so just work on it slowly, build it up. So from there I thought, okay, why can't I combine them? So push off and then catch, yeah? So build the speed up. So I do it slowly, push through and to the next one, catch it and lower, yeah? So I'm building the two together. One, two, yeah? The more steps you do, the faster the momentum, the more load it has to unload. To, to decelerate, yeah? So if you did a bit more space, you could do three, four steps, and then you really build the speed up and then catch and unload it. It's getting it working a bit more functionally. Then I thought, okay, what did I do next? I pushed off, I caught, I came up. So I thought, why not isometric, yeah? There's the three, the three ways the muscle works, concentric, isometric, and eccentric. So I'm doing concentric, eccentric, isometric, and hold. Yeah? So that would look like one, two, three, four, three. There it gets tricky now. So I'm offloading the, the offloading and then hold to a balance. Yeah? And then you just keep going. You know, you could do one, two, three, four, up, hold. Yeah? Just play with it, that's what I've been doing. And it, it, I'll tell you what it works. One, two, up, hold, up and hold, and then push off, yeah? That, that's been my morning, jogging around my kitchen, trying to push the ankle into different ways, working in different ways, and it's really starting to help, yeah? Just getting it back, and I'm kind of training my running technique, so I'm training to run from foot to, you know, foot underneath, yeah. Um, it's hard to demonstrate in talks. I'm a man, I can't do two things at once. But if you've got, you know, when you concentrate on it and any imbalance, put your feet down and stop, right? Try again, try again, yeah. And when you can do one of them consistently well, try the next and then combine and then increase the paces. More paces, more momentum, more load to decelerate. So I'm quite pleased with that because I, I, uh, I, I, that seems to be working very well for me. So that's where we'll go for now. Day 11, getting there slowly, frustrating, really frustrating, but we'll get there.